Reproductions in color or in black and white, showing the whole or showing details, make these two paintings easily accessible. Yet this is how these images are introduced. Each woman stands out with equal clarity against the enormous dark surface, yet they are linked by a firm rhythmical arrangement and a subdued diagonal pattern formed by their heads and hands. Subtle modulations of the deep glowing blacks contribute to the harmonious fusion of the whole and form an unforgettable contrast with the powerful whites and vivid flesh tones where the detached strokes reach a peak of breadth and strength. In the portrait of the men, House's old tendency of creating an impression of casual informality and the instantaneousness recurs. But the pictorial unity appears less successful than in earlier works. The intense light areas of the flesh tones, the great expanses of white linen, and the daringly broad red touch on the knee of the man on the right tend to jump and are not fully integrated into a coherent design. That is a quotation from the most comprehensive book on Hals in English. It was published last year. It's as though the author wants to mask the images, as though he fears their directness and accessibility. As in so many other pictures by Hals, the penetrating characterizations almost seduce us into believing that we know the personality traits and even the habits of the men and women portrayed. And in the case of some critics, the seduction has been a total success. He speaks of seduction disparagingly. Yet what is this seduction? It's nothing less than the painting working on us. If the characterization is, as he says, penetrating, it penetrates to reveal something. It's as though he doesn't want us to make sense of it in our terms. And when he sums up, he resorts to meaningless generalizations. We attempt to control the powerful impact his paintings make upon us by considering the tradition in which he worked and the range of possibilities open to him. The effort only increases our admiration for House's unwavering commitment to his personal vision, which enriches our consciousness of our fellow men and heightens our awe for the ever-increasing power of the mighty impulses that enabled him to give us a close view of life's vital forces. This is mystification. Children, until they are educated out of it and are forced to accept the mystifications, look at images and interpret them very directly. They connect any image, whether from a comic or from the National Gallery, directly with their own experience. I showed a reproduction of the Caravaggio to a group of school children. I think it could have been they stole the food. One of them saying, I'm not going to eat it, it's stolen food. And that, he's going, why not? Something like that. Do you think he wants to get up? Yeah. yeah. He looks as if he's a bit Just about to pass the table. They're all romantic. And she wants to go away and do something. I think that might be Jesus. <laughs> what makes you think it might be Jesus? Well, he's in the center of the table, and he looks like he might be a leader of some kind. Looks like a sheep to me. And, yeah. and they've got they've got the um, food on the table there. I mean, yes, but they haven't got bread or wine. So. Yes. 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 What do the, what do the rest of you think about him saying that uh, that it might be Jesus? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's Jesus. He's got his own opinion. I don't know. Mm. Everybody Could be. Some of you think it's a man, and some of you think it's a woman. I think it's a woman. I think it's a woman. I think it's a woman. You can woman. tell. Because she's got I think she's too fat to be a man. It looks as though they're all going to jump out and kiss her, because no, she just says <laughs> that. <laughs> and he's got his arm out a cuddle, and he's jumping up and running around. I think it's a man. I think it's a woman. I think it's a woman. There's no bristles even. Yes, but he hasn't got any bristles. He got a moustache. Yes, he hasn't got any bristles. Um, all of the, all of the, no, not quite all, but most of the boys thought that he was a man, and most of the girls, you thought he, she, she was a woman. I'm not sure. And you said she was, she was perhaps both. Because they were really looking and really relating what they saw to their own experience, they recognised something that most adults wouldn't. Without knowing the artist's name, let alone anything about Caravaggio's life or the fact that he was a homosexual, they immediately saw how sexually ambivalent the principal figure was. I can't pretend to the clairvoyance of children, but in the next three programmes, I'm going to try to relate the experience of art directly to other experiences and to use the means of reproduction as though they offered a language, as though pictures were like words rather than holy relics.
how we see women, possessions, advertisements and their promises which surround us on every side. But remember that I am controlling and using for my own purposes the means of reproduction needed for these programs. The images may be like words, but there is no dialogue yet. You cannot reply to me. For that to become possible in the modern media of communication, access to television must be extended beyond its present narrow limits. Meanwhile, with this program, as with all programs, you receive images and meanings which are arranged. I hope you will consider what I arrange, but be skeptical of it. And Ways of Seeing looks at the role of the female nude next Saturday at 2 o'clock. <laughs>